Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. This is Sohini from South Bay, California and I welcome you today. So in today's video, we are going to review how to use Azure for the AutoML services that they provide. So let's say that you have a data set and you really don't have time to spend in order to come up with the hyperparameters or to test exactly which class of uh, you know, machine learning models is the best for it. So cloud platforms such as you know, GCP, Azure or AWS have made it super simple so that you don't really need to spend a lot of time writing scripts to come up with the best hyperparameters. Instead, you can just use AutoML in order to get what is the best kind of you know, data model and what are the best uh, you know, parameters that come with it. You can even do um, you know, data shrinkage such as PCA or you know, optimization at, uh, at feature level. Feature engineering is also possible. So today's video is going to be a hands-on tutorial on, uh, on Azure using the AutoML services. I hope you enjoy them and stay tuned for the next installment where we look into data annotation. So let's get straight to it. And if you like the content published in this uh, you know, video sequences, please give this video a thumbs up and hit subscribe to never miss a video. All right. so. We are, we have come into portal.azure.com. So this is where you need to sign up to follow along with me. Um, and again, there is an initial credits that you get. So if I just go and type in billing, uh, and here you will actually see that I have access to $200 worth of credits and I've you know, currently just used $2.29 uh, yesterday trying uh, my experiment. So make sure the first step is always uh, log into portal dot azure.com all right once you're here we will start by creating a resource group so um, let me call in and i am going to be linking it to my azure subscription uh, that i would already have i will give it a name new or let me call it auto ml <coughs> And then I needed to give it a, a region where this will be created. So I am in, in the West Coast. So that's why I'm going to be giving US, you know, West. Well, I have a US West. And then I, if, if I need to create any tags, I can do that. Otherwise, I can just uh, validation has passed. And then I say just, you know, create it. So uh, this resource has been created. This is called the AutoML group. Now, when I have this AutoML group, I need to now create uh, another resource. And in this case, I am going to be typing in machine learning. And now I hit create. So again, resource group is AutoML. Uh, the, the workspace that I'm calling it is new, ex, new experiment. It's in West US. These are the keys that get, that get detected. And I just say review and create. It has passed the validation and then uh, I will just say creating. And when it does, it, it will take you know some time to, to deploy it. Once the deployment is done, you can actually see all of this is a part of your resource groups. It's always good practice to start with a resource group uh, because then everything is in one place. And then let's say that uh, you're done with this experiment. You just want to delete it. Uh, you, you just go ahead and, and, and delete the, the resource group altogether. All right. As you can see, when, once this is uh, done, it will say your deployment is complete. Uh, we can go to the resource and this is what this new experiment page looks like. And now uh, if, if you go back to your resource group, you can see there's this uh, you know, new experiment, which is a machine learning resource group. And then you have the auto ML resource group that has been connected as well. So if I go to new XP, what I now need to do is launch studio. And this takes you to ml.azure.com. And this is the link that now will be working. Now, when you are in the Azure ML, uh, what we will today do is look at the easiest version, how to use the Azure ML Studio. And we will begin with the automated ML or the auto ML. Now, auto ML, typically its role is in order to automatically figure out what's the best model, explain it so that you don't have to do the background work in, in order to you know, fit what's the best kind of uh, you know, machine learning model that, that fits for, for this particular data set. So, 
In our last video, we have seen uh, the hospital data set, right, which had 25,000 samples. We are going to be using the same data set today in order to create a new AutoML version for it, right? So now let's say that I'm going to be creating a new AutoML run. Uh, the first step is create a, a data set. So either I can, you know, supply a data set from a web file or I can upload it from a local file. So let's say I'm uh, uploading it from the local file and I will be calling it hospital readmit, right? And this is tabular, of course, uh, a data set version one. And then I hit next. I hit next. So now it's uploading the data set. So it's comma separated. Uh, you want to keep the headers, right? So uh, you want to use the headers from the first file. If you want to skip any rows, then you you know you mention that. Otherwise, uh, this is just fine. And this is the way in which the data has been loaded, right? So if you if you remove the the headers, you will see that the headers go away. Uh, so the column names then in that case will go away, but uh, it'll just appear to be column one, column two. But ideally, you want the headers, right? So uh, so that you can call um, something by the by the name of the header. Um, so you know this is the exactly the format in which you want your data to be once you've previewed it uh, let's just check if we have the readmission the the column number 50, 65 this is the readmitted right so this exists this is our, our label so then we say next this is all the different column names uh, that has come up if there are any missing values or anything the the system will automatically tell you so this is the hot or the, the hospital readmit and i'm saying create the data set you you check on the data set and then you click next in which now you are going to be configuring a new experiment. So uh, you call it auto ML uh, because this is a data science pro project. I'm calling it DS and the target column. Now, what is the, the Y label? So the target column I know is the readmitted or not, right? And then it will ask you select a computer cluster. And ideally, if you have not already, is if this is the first time you're doing, you'll probably have to do a create a new uh, computer cluster. So this is the kind of compute that you are going to be using. All right. So ideally, you can have the, the standard ones or the, or the general purpose ones or as you keep going. And there is also an you know, option to check if you want CPU or GPU or dedicated, so on and so forth. So. In this case, I will go for the you know lower end one because this is just 25,000. Let me call it <coughs> standard. The minimum number of nodes that I want is one and the maximum number of nodes that I want is let's say two. The idle seconds before scale down and then I say create. So it has creating a standard. Now, of course it is, it will first, you know, launch and initialize and everything, but you know, that's the status. Then you need to mention what kind of task are you trying to do? Is this regression? Is this time series or is this classification? And for classification, you can also enable if, if you require deep learning or not. So ideally in this case, it's just, you know, data science, we do not have deep learning. So that's all I give and I hit finish. This will take some time in order to come up with this run one. So this is what you will see once you have initiated everything. And this is the page that will keep updating itself. All right, so uh, I have now completed uh, the runs and, and this is uh, where I will be able to now show you what the runs uh, have achieved. Here you see the duration was about 22 minutes and here you'll get an idea of all the possible models that were tried out in this whole time. And uh, of course you will see their accuracies and if you're interested, if you go to a particular model, you will be able to see its its exact metrics and um, you know, based off of all the, the versions that you are interested in. So accuracy, AUC, uh, and also the confusion matrix. Confusion matrix, I often find it very useful because this box is the true positive, the, the false positive, and this box is the false negative. And ideally for hospital bed occupancy, you do not want to miscalculate it. So uh, if it is a, if somebody needs a bed, you definitely want to ensure that you have enough, uh, you know, in, enough to go around. So false negatives should be minimized. So this box should be something that is minimized more than the other one. So F1 score and, uh, you know, the, looking at the confusion matrix is going to help you uh, make that decision better. Uh, the other thing uh, that I did want to mention or did want to show you here is if you go to all the different models, you can now actually create deployable versions. So 
here I've already created some deployable versions you see in this case I, I've called it SNXGB so let's say that there is a uh, there there is a new model that you want to create so that you can utilize that at runtime you can actually do that and the way to do that is let's say uh, I am using uh, max absolute scalar or standard scalar wrapper random forest right i click on this and here of course you can look at all the metrics but then you just hit deploy you need to give it a name say sswrf right and i hit azure container service uh, container instance and i hit deploy and whenever it does, whenever it's, it's, it's finished, it'll, it'll tell you that, uh, you know, that it has uh, successfully finished. For now, I just wanted to show you the outcome. Like I've already tried it for a couple of, of, of models. So this was the one. Um, so this is an XGBoost classifier and it's using sparse normalizer. And here, of course, uh, these are the different metrics. So there's precision recall ROC. Now let's look at the explanations. So the explanations that have been generated. So here, uh, if if you look at the the, the data set explorer, uh, you will be able to see for the different columns. So uh, if you want to look at all the data and, and you can actually look at uh, the, the column values or if you want to look at the correlations uh, between uh, some other columns, so column one and maybe column two. If you want to see how they are correlated, you can actually, so ideally you want to uh, prevent you know di uh, diagonal values because that's going to show you multicollinearity so this would be a good way in order for you to look at is if this data is multicollinear or not or um, if, if there's some other way you want to look at the distribution of of the data set so um, that is one thing that you can definitely look at so then you can also look at the feature importance the most important feature which is the uh, you know top rank one what's the next ranked one and and so on and so forth and, um Feature importance, uh, you know, finding out the relative distributions between index, you know, indices or co correlations between uh, the data set. You can actually look at it figuratively. You don't really have to write some code to do that. This is all done using a GUI, which is super cool. Uh, and now this this uh, version of, of the model is also deployed. So that will be very useful for us at runtime.